Just think, just a few years ago, <clears throat> these two little ones weren't even in this world, and now they're glorifying God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Turn to Matthew with me, please. Matthew chapter number 1. Matthew chapter number 1, verse 16. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David to the carrying away into Babylon, 14 generations. From the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ, 14 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now notice verse 19 very carefully tonight. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Father, I pray now that you'd anoint the lips of this messenger and bless your word as it goes forth. May it fall on good ground tonight, tomorrow, a year from now, whenever they hear it. In thy name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you can be seated. Now, I've mentioned to you on a number of times how that Matthew and Luke treat the birth of Christ as it relates to a, to a human being, Joseph. I've told you how that both of them make it very clear that Joseph is not the father of the Lord Jesus Christ. They make it very clear. You read it here in Matthew chapter number 1, and you also read it again over here in Luke chapter number 3. And uh, you, you, the reason for this is because the Holy Spirit wants you to understand that there should be no way that you could uh, make a mistake on this and believe that Joseph had anything to do with it. Now, as I've told you before, the Babylonian Talmud teaches that a Roman soldier, Ben Pantera, or Ben Pantera, is the father of Christ. And they threw it in his face in John chapter number 8 when they said, We not be born of fornication. So uh, this, was, uh, this was something that hung over the head of the Lord Jesus uh, and his mother, all the days of his life. Mary, of course, was uh, visited by Gabriel, and he told her that she was going to have a child. Now, Gabriel means man of God. And he said, I'm the one that stands before the Lord. He and Michael are the only two angels named in the Bible. Michael is so-called, or is called directly, an archangel. But no other angel is. Here over here in Matthew, chapter number 1, when Matthew the publican, this is Levi, takes pen in hand and begins to write Scripture he wants you to understand something about Joseph. Notice what he says in verse number 19, Matthew 1. Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. He could have had her stoned to death. He could have. For the culture of the day and the law of Moses, he could have had her stoned to death, but he did not want that. He was going to, by, by virtue of his character... The kind of man that he was, he, didn't want, he did not want to see any blood, he didn't want to see any uh, judgment, he didn't want to see condemnation. He was going to just put her away privately, and that would be the end of the matter. But then, of course, the Lord intervenes. But what I want to call your attention to tonight is Joseph. Now, I want you to think about this. God used a Joseph to defend and protect Israel when they were in captivity. And did you know that the Bible says in the Old Testament when God told Moses and Aaron to go stand before Pharaoh and pronounced his people delivered from the hand of the Egyptian bondage after 400 years, he said, you go tell Pharaoh this, Israel is my son, my firstborn, let my son go. That's right. They never said those words, but that's what God told them to say. So Israel in the Old Testament becomes a type of the Son of God in that sense, because Israel is my son, my firstborn. Think of it. The Lord Jesus Christ is the first one born of the Holy Ghost. So God used a Joseph to deliver Israel while they were in Egyptian captivity. He also uses a Joseph to deliver the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, once again from Egypt. 
for from the hand of Herod the Great, who would have killed him, they went into Egypt, and they were there until the death of Herod the so-called Great, and then they came back up out of Egypt, and the scripture quotes that Old Testament passage, where it says, Thou hast called my son out of Egypt, talking about Israel in the Old Testament, and Christ in the New. So the scripture has a double application. And that's one of the keys to understanding prophecy in Scripture. You have to understand it's a big deal that a many a time the Bible, the Scripture, is not exhausted. That there's a future, complete fulfillment of the Scripture. So Joseph is a just man. He's like Nathaniel, the Bible said, an Israelite, and indeed in who is no guile. He's like Elizabeth and Zacharias, who were who who who, who was serving faithfully in the priesthood. And they were, they were so blessed of God that they were going to bring the forerunner of Christ into the world. They were like Simeon and Anna, who, Anna, who was 84 years old and she lived in the temple night and day. And all she did was pray and fast and seek the face of God. And Simeon was an old man, the Bible said, who was looking for the consolation of Israel. So all these Jews were not corrupt people by any means. Many of them were faithful servants of God. And that's exactly who Joseph was. Not only a faithful servant of God, but a just man. Amen. And I want to tell you something, folks. If you ever meet a just man or a just person, hold on to them. <laughs> because you live in a generation of people who have no character. They have none whatsoever. But the Lord, know, He knew exactly what He was doing when He chose Mary as the mother of Jesus. She is a virgin daughter of Zion. She's a virgin. And she is to bring our Lord Jesus into the world. And Joseph is going to be her husband. And Joseph believed the angel. He received the word of God. He accepted his lot, his place, in the greater scheme of the birth of Christ. Knowing that he would have nothing personally to do or involved in the actual birth, but he would be party to him being born and brought into this world and, his, and, and raising him from childhood into manhood. Now the thing about Joseph is nowhere in the Bible, in the New Testament of course, does it ever tell us when he died. It doesn't tell us where he died or how he died. Nothing is said about that. As a matter of fact, Joseph is up until the age of 12 of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's mentioned, of course, he's with him when he's at 12 years of age, Amen. taken to the temple, that is, Bar Mitzvah, Amen. when the Lord, according to Jewish tradition, becomes a son of the law. If you remember, Mary made the mistake after they had left and Christ was not with them, and uh, they had gone, what was it, three days' journey, and supposing he was with the company, and found out he wasn't along with this good thing of DHCS, DHCS, whatever it is. It's a good thing they weren't around back then, amen? amen. That's right. <laughs> Here they are, way off. And where's, where's their son? And then they come to find out he's not there. They go back, and where do they find him? They find him in the temple. And here's what Mary said to him. And to paraphrase her, why have you done this to, to me and your father? And that's his opportunity to rebuke his mother and say, I must be about my father's business. So Joseph understood that. I'm sure he heard those words. I'm sure Joseph understood that the Lord Jesus at the age of 12 knew fully why he was here and where he came from. And there's nothing said in scripture about Joseph rebuking anyone. Joseph was a kind man. He was a gentle man. He was a just man. He was exactly the kind of man that God would choose to be the husband of the mother of his son. And that's exactly what happened. Notice carefully that no, no, not, no record made of his death. So, you know, that to say you'd, you'd think maybe he'd be important enough to where it would mention now Joseph passed away, you know. But not a word is said. And it's like as if, it's as if to say the Lord is trying to emphasize his humility. Joseph is a humble man. He's not only a just man, he's humble. He doesn't need the spotlight. He doesn't need for people to know who he is. It doesn't matter that it's not, it's not about him. He knew that. He knew it was about the Lord Jesus Christ. He knew that from day one. He knew that. And he accepted the word of Gabriel. And so his place in the scripture is fulfilled. Now this is the way the Christian life goes. 
We have other Christian celebrities, and we have the big shots, medium shots, and little shots. We've got all kinds of shots around. We've got people with all kinds of accolades and, and buttons and gear and everything. They've been, they've been recognized and blah, blah, and on and on and on. But the truth of the matter is, until we get to the judgment seat of Christ, the Bema, that's mentioned in 1 Corinthians, we'll never really know what went on in the church of God. Amen. We really won't know. It's when he calls the people forth you've never heard of. You've never seen them, know nothing about them. But they will be the ones. He said, if you give a drink of water in my name, you won't lose your reward. Amen. 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 People reward people in this world for motivational purposes. And there's nothing wrong with that, per se. But the truth of the matter is, we're not serving people. We're serving the Lord Christ. Amen. That's who we love and who we serve. With the fact that we serve people is incidental to the fact that we serve the Lord. If we serve the Lord, we'll serve people. Amen. But the Apostle Paul said, the love of Christ constraineth us. The love of Christ, the fact that we love Him. So Joseph showed his love. He loved Mary. He no doubt loved her. He no doubt loved her. And I believe he loved the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I really do. I believe he loved Him. And nothing is said about him except in, I think it is in, uh, in John 6 or on over in the passage, it says, Is not this the carpenter's son? Making, you know, a, a kind of a, 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 a sarcastic reference to him. But as far as Joseph himself, it's simply making reference to the fact that Joseph had been. But from that, we take it that he was no longer on this earth. And God took him to where he belonged. He belonged with the Lord. I'm going to meet Joseph one day. I'd like to meet him, wouldn't you? Yes, I'd like to meet Joseph. Amen. I would. I'd like to. God's people that he has used down through the years, every one of us has, has our place. Amen. And it takes a while to learn that. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 said, we all have our place. No part of the body of Christ can say to the other part of the body of Christ, we have, need, we have no need of thee. Right, or we're greater than thee. Right. Oh, no, 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 no. We all need each other. And the Lord Jesus needed Joseph. And Joseph fulfilled his responsibility, and he did it well. Amen. And so may God bless his memory. Amen. Amen. Mary gets all of the memory. Mary gets all of them, and rightfully so. She's the mother of Christ. But it took more than Mary. Amen, it took more than Mary. It took more than Mary. Amen. Just like it'll take more than me, and it'll take more than you, any of us. The only one that cannot be replaced is the Lord Christ. Amen. Father, bless your holy word as it goes out tonight. We remember Joseph. He's the kind of man that we'd all like to be like. He's an honorable man. He's a just man. He's a decent man. He loves his wife. He loves his little stepson. He's the kind of man that you used. In Jesus' name, and for Jesus' sake we ask it. Amen. 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 All right, brother.